Hello everyone, my name is Tanner Babcock. I'm going to be talking a little bit about my favorite operating system in the world, Void Linux. It's the operating system I'm using right now. I've been using it as my daily driver since about December 2021. And then before that, I used it for about a year, back in 2019, on my old laptop. Void Linux is a great distribution because it offers you a lot of options. Some of the options it gives you, you can install the GNU libc, or you could install Moosle, Muscle which is you know much faster and much lighter but doesn't have as great of support for third-party and proprietary applications it also comes with run it instead of system D that's what I really like about it I really hate system D I really want to get system D out of existence so on void Linux you have run it which makes everything simple, everything easy, everything fast. It works great. It comes with the XBPS package manager, which was written in C, and it also has XBPS source, which allows users to compile their own packages. It works great for some of those suckless programs like ST and DWM. And we can look at their website here. There's some news. They have this documentation section, which is really nice. They used to have a wiki. The wiki is deprecated, though. You do not want to be looking at the Void Linux wiki. Now we can compare this to the Arch Wiki, which that's the best thing about Arch Linux is their wiki here. <clears throat> I've never been crazy about Arch Linux. I know everyone compares Void to Arch Linux for some reason, probably because it's so minimal, probably because it's a little tricky to install, probably because, you know, it's very lean very stripped down. I think Void is just so much more secure and so much more stable than your <clears throat> garden variety Arch Linux installation. Because <clears throat> Void doesn't break. It just doesn't. Arch, Arch does that. <clears throat> Arch users have to know they have to have some idea how easy it is to just uh, break things on Arch Linux. I did a stream the other day. I installed uh, Artix Linux with uh, Plasma. And I just wanted to install a couple things. I just wanted to install uh, HTOP in Git. You know, it should be just like a simple Pac-Man command. And when I installed those, uh, they, neither of them worked. <laughs> they were both broken when I tried to install them. Everything else still worked. But I was just kind of dead in the water there, like, eh, this is awkward. <laughs> I wanted to say some nice things about Artix Linux, but it all kind of broke. <laughs> No, the, the, pretty much the only time I ever used Arch Linux was a long, long time ago, back in 2012, when I would have been 15. Oh, the Linux game was so different back then. And I think Arch was, would have been harder to install back then. I learned, I did learn a lot installing Arch as a 15 year old you know because you have to I mean look at all this you have to read all this they didn't always have a a nice graphical installer you had to do it from the command line so I guess Arch isn't totally terrible Void Linux has this nice documentation they have these uh, advanced installation guides and this is what I used 
installing Void Linux with full disk encryption. Yep, this is exactly how I did it. It took me three tries <laughs> and about eight or nine hours, but I successfully installed Void Linux on my encrypted solid state drive. And it asks me for my passphrase every time I boot because it's encrypted. Looks like this method of installing makes a ch root followed by ch own ch mod so it's very brass tacks it's very like don't mess around with graphical installer just just do it like this and then i think there's a few more things i had to do after i installed it but i mean let's look at some of void's packages like what is available on Void Linux? Steam, Steam. There's your Steam. What about uh, Plasma? KDE5, KDE Plasma. What about Spotify? We have Lib Spotify. We have MoPD. I've used that before. Spotify QT lightweight Spotify client. Looks like it doesn't come in the default repositories. They have GIMP, the GNU image manipulation program. I think they have Blender. Ah, yes they do. OBS, open broadcaster software. And they have all kinds of stuff. They have some man pages. What if we look at the XBP? Well, General commands, XBPS, that's not working. We can just go to their GitHub. Void Linux organization on GitHub. This is where a lot of their work happens. This void packages repository is great. This is how you use XBPS source. I've done other streams in the past where, you know, I've shown off XBPS source and void packages. Void make live for making a uh, live root file system maker and installer. This could be really useful. I've never actually used that before. There's the void docs documentation we were just looking at. It has a lot of contributors. And uh, I've been hearing all over the place, like, oh, void is dead. No one updates void anymore. No one works on void anymore. You know, what is seven days ago? That doesn't seem dead to me. This is XBPS, repository for XBPS itself. 55 contributors. Yeah, it looks pretty active. <laughs> Definitely not dead. Void packages. The most recent commit is uh, in four hours. <laughs> so yeah, this repo was updated in the future. <laughs> so yeah, that's how not dead Void Linux is. This Arch Wiki though is still really nice and you could probably actually uh, use a lot of these wiki pages as a reference. Like, you know, for applications like Qt Browser. You know, applications like uh, X, X org. It can be a little tricky. Uh, void Linux services. How to? Look at services and daemons. So, so yeah, 
If you want, we can take a look at my service directory. See what services I have going. Just type ls var service. And these are all of the services which are started and managed by Runit every time I boot into my ThinkPad. Here's HTOP, so you can get a better idea of what this looks like. It starts, this tree right here starts run sv dir for run service dir. There we have all the services you can see in that other window. Blue Alsa, Agetti, Dbus Daemon, Transmission Daemon, Crony, Vertlock D, MPD, UDEV D, TLP, Pipewire, Elogin D, so I can reboot without sudo, and Apache. And if I wanted to turn off any of these services, like a transmission daemon, for instance, yeah. let's take a look at this. I'll just type sudo sv down. sudo sv down transmission daemon. And that brings it down. And as you can see in my HTOP, this process ended. So transmission daemon is no longer running. That's how you start and stop services, like transmission daemon. And you just type up, just bring it back up. And there it is again. So yeah, if you wanted to if you wanted to remove one of these services, you'd do a sudo rm var service uh, let's say Bluetooth D. Let's say you don't like Bluetooth D. So you just do that. You can do a pkill x Bluetooth D. And yep, there it goes. But if you want to turn on Bluetooth D, so now even if I rebooted, it wouldn't give me Bluetooth D. That wouldn't start when I started my system. But to bring it back, you would do a sudo lns etc etc service directory Bluetooth D. This is what else is in the service directory. Bluetooth D. So you just create a symbolic link. Create a symbolic link from Etsy slash service to this directory. Slash var slash service. You do that. And it comes back. You can see Bluetooth D is now running again. And these are just symbolic links, so if you type a sudo rm for something in the var service directory, it doesn't actually delete that package from your system. It just removes it from the queue of daemons that are started on boot. Well, anyway, I hope this has been informative to people who are on the fence about Void. I love it. I think everyone should give it a shot because it's great. Everything is smooth. Everything works nice. There's no system D. You just straight up don't have to worry <laughs> about things other Linux users worry about. And that's a pretty great feeling to have. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching, everyone. My name is Tanner Babcock. You could uh, check out some of my other videos and subscribe. Thanks for watching.